In our nice little application, we're now able to add items to the collection, to remove them, but now it would be nice to have this on two separate pages instead of one. So we need routing, we need the Angular 2 router. Nothing easier than that, let's start working on that. The Angular 2 framework ships with its own router. So setting up routing is really easy. We don't need to pull in an extra package or anything like this. We already have components and these components will serve as pages using the router. So the missing piece is to add the router and to add a header so that we got a way to actually navigate and click some links. Let's start by creating the header. So I will simply generate a new component, nggz, and I want to generate it in the app folder. I don't want to create a new subfolder for this. I could add it to the shared folder, but here I will simply add it to the root folder just to show this as well. I'll name it header and now I'll add es or is to use inline styles. I'll also add spec false, you saw that before. And now I'll also add minus minus flat, which means don't create a subfolder for it. Place it directly in the folder. So this command will now give me these two new files, the header here. Now I don't need to do anything in the TypeScript file. You could remove the constructor and the on init method since we don't need that here, but you could also leave it here. But of course I want to work in the HTML file and the template. Here I'll add a row and then again some columns or a column, the bootstrap grid. And then here I'll add an unordered list with the class nav and the class nav pills. This is some bootstrap code again to create a nice navigation with some, well, this pills look. You will see it in action soon. In this list I want to have two LIs which hold a link, created like this with the Emmet plugin. And the first one should say collection, the second one should say market. I'm going to hook up these links soon. With this I got my links set up, but of course this header is not really used right now. So to use it I also need to add it here in the app module in the declarations array, also add the import. And then in my app component HTML file, I want to add my header here. So I will add my app header at the top like this, and then let's say a horizontal line. With this in place, if we let this reload, we should see the header. Nice, like this. Of course, nothing is highlighted right now and these links also don't work. I'll work on this next. To make it work, to make these links work, I first need a router with some routes to which I can actually navigate. To create this, I'll go to my app folder and create a new file there. I'll name it, name it app.routing.ts to indicate that this file holds my routing related logic. Now no worries, setting up routing is really easy. You first need to configure which routes you want to have. And configuring this is simply an array with some objects where each object represents a route. So I'll create a new constant here, which I'll name app routes, for example, the name is up to you. And this will be of type routes. Now routes has to be imported from add angular router. So add this import. And then as I mentioned, it is an array of JavaScript object. Each object here has a path property and path now means the part in the URL. So what comes after this slash here? For example, user would be a path here or market would be a path. You don't add the slash though. So here, the first path I want to have is the collection path. In this case, I want to load my collection component. Make sure to also add this import up here. This will later on tell the router whenever we visit our domain slash collection, load this collection component. I'll duplicate it because I also want to have a market route slash market. In this case, I want to load market component, also add this import. So we got collection and market. There's one important route missing. Have a look at our application. Where are we right now? You could imagine an empty string after slash here. We also need to cover this route. 
So I'll duplicate this one more time and remove it. So now path is just an empty string, which means, yeah, this root route where we are at the beginning. In this case, I don't want to load a separate component. I don't have one. I want to navigate to the collection, let's say. So I can set this route up to redirect myself. Here I therefore add redirect to, a property known by Angular 2, of course. And then I want to navigate to slash collection. Now here I need the slash because this means it's an absolute route. Append slash collection after the domain. If I would just have collection, this would be a relative route, which means appended to the current path, which could be localhost slash user and then collection. Now I don't want that. Here I simply want to go to the absolute collection route, the second one here. I need to add one other property, path match full. What this does is it tells Angular 2 only execute this route, only redirect myself in this case, if the complete path is empty. If I would not have this property here, this route would always be fired even if we have slash market. Because you can think of there is always an empty string between the slash and the path. So to avoid this behavior, we set path match full, which means only if there is nothing else, then use this route. So then we would get redirected. With that, we configured our routes now we have to register them with the Angular 2 router. To do so, we call router module, and you have to import that from at angular slash router, and then for root, which means register these routes as root routes in the application, known to the whole application, which of course is important. And here I pass as an argument my routes. Now that alone won't do the trick, routing still would not work. I have to export a constant, let's name it routing, which holds this configured router module. Because this configured router module, now stored in the routing constant, has to be added to my app module, here in the imports array. This is where I add any module, and router module is such a module. It's a built-in one, now configured with our routes, but we have to add it here. By default, Angular 2 doesn't add all built-in modules, which is great because if we don't need them, this would simply hit our performance and why do that if we don't use it? So here I'll add routing and of course you need to add the import from dot slash app dot routing, so this routing file. This now adds the configured routing module. With this, we got routing in place. Now to see it in action, we have one missing but important piece. We need to tell the Angular 2 router where to render this component or these components. We tell it to render the collection component if we visit slash collection and the market component if we visit slash market, but where should it render them? Thankfully, it's not by default overwriting our complete HTML code. Instead, we have to give it a hook where to render this. So here I'll remove the selectors of my components and instead set up this hook. The directive we have to use for this is router outlet, a built-in directive telling Angular 2 this is the place where you should render your components or the components we're routing to. With this, if I let this application reload, we should already see this in action. It's loading collection by default since we set up this redirection and I can also go to market. Cool. The missing pieces, of course, are the two links in the header, which don't work right now. So let's make them work. To connect our links here, we need to replace this ref attribute with router link. This is a built-in directive Angular 2 ships with. The squared brackets you see here indicate property binding, which is another form of data binding Angular 2 offers. Property binding basically means you bind to a property, in this case to a property of a directive. Directive and property here have the same name. The directive is named router link and the property is also named router link, which is why Angular 2 allows you to use both in one assignment or one statement. But with the squared brackets, we're basically passing some data into this directive. 
the data I want to pass is an array. This is how you set up navigation in Angular 2. In this array, each element stands for one segment in your path in the URL. So if you have longer path, let's say slash user, some ID, then, then slash detail, then you would have three segments, user, ID, detail. Now here we're only going to have one segment, the collection like this. Now you can use a relative path like I do here, also with dot slash for example, or an absolute one with a leading slash. This one will always navigate to your domain slash collection, whereas this will always append collection to the end of the current path. So if you're on slash market and then visit collection without a leading slash, you would be redirected to slash market slash collection. Probably not what you want, therefore I'll add a leading slash to make this absolute. Time to also set up the router link for the market link here. Here I'll also pass an array and navigate to slash market. With this setup, let's reload this application and see if this works. Great. Of course it would be nice to see which navigation item currently is active. So to finish this application, let's add this functionality. To add such a style with normal CSS, we could add a class to the list item, a CSS class of active, which is a class provided by Bootstrap. And by adding it to the list item, once this reloads, Bootstrap will highlight this as active. Of course, this now stays active even if I navigate away because I hard-coded it into my header. It would be nice if we could conditionally attach this CSS class to the list item only if the nested link is active. Turns out we can do that with Angular 2. And it isn't that difficult. All we have to do is we have to add the router link active directive and here between the quotation marks we pass active the name of the CSS class we want to attach. The cool thing is Angular 2, the router link directive here, automatically finds the router link active directive belonging to it or property belonging to it and is able to work with it and use the CSS class we specify here to attach it to our list item. Do you now see my point of Angular 2 making many things very simple once you mastered the initial, well, starting phase? This is one of the examples. With router link active, let's also add it to the other link, we can now style these links conditionally. Imagine how much work that would have been with jQuery and this is how easy it is now with Angular 2. And now you can see it correctly switches, I can items to the collection add items to the collection, remove them from the collection, add them again, and so on. So this is our working Angular 2 application we built here with a lot of core features Angular 2 offers covered. I hope you enjoyed it and I'd be happy to see you in future videos. Bye.